so this is going to be a little bit of a backstory it might turn into more than one video because there's quite a lot that I can say um so we're going all the way back from when I first kind of noticed that things were different all the way up to kind of where we are today which is kind of mainstream primary school talking which is something at one point you know you're petrified that is never ever going to happen um Jaden was well I would say he was turning three when he started to to talk as such he had a few words from maybe two and a half but they were uh, not retained so he would maybe have five words at a time one week five words at a time the next week but they weren't necessarily the same five words so he'd have more everything was more 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 and everyone would be like oh my god wow he's saying a word and I'd be like don't get excited because next week it'll be a different word and that word will be gone <laughs> um so going right back to maybe when I first started to notice that things weren't quite right or that something was different um, he has a twin sister, which I, I guess I, I wouldn't have maybe known about milestones quite so much, or I wouldn't have been as, as aware of kind of what was normal as such. Um, so he kind of equaled at nine months. He was hitting kind of milestones till he was maybe one. He would um, answer to his name. He, if he said no, he'd kind of giggle, acknowledge what you were saying, but carry on with what he was doing. And then I would say around 14 months, he had like quite a major regression. So we went from um, from that way he would acknowledge what you were saying, or at least that you were talking to him, um, to completely no eye contact. He wouldn't engage with you in any way at all. Um, and he didn't answer to his name or anything like that. And that went on all the way up to, I would say, about two and a half. Um, so I can remember saying around that time to my ex-husband that I was a little bit, you know, he's why, why is he not interacting and that kind of thing. The one thing he would always do um if his dad called him on like a video call he would look at the screen so that was the one time that he would connect or like um have that kind of connection with somebody was on a video call so the first time i took him to the gp he was i think 20 months old or around that um and it was more the fact that he wasn't listening or you know he wasn't understanding what i was saying to him um and the doctor i mean he wasn't he wasn't nice um Jane got quite distressed during that appointment because he was trying the doctor was trying to look in his ears and he was telling me to restrain him harder which you can imagine a child that doesn't understand you know he's frailing he's trying to get away um the doctor kind of was quite blunt and was you know like, well I can't do what I need to do you can't hold it still um so Jane at that point just opened the door of the office ran just bolted out the doctor's office obviously chased him went back and the doctor's attitude was just kind of, it's his, it's his personality. He's essentially a naughty child, I guess. Um, and I shouldn't be worrying. Like, well, it's not so much that he's not talking, it's that he's not understanding things. And at that point I was already thinking autism, but obviously the doctors don't really know. Um, so then the next thing I suppose was his two year check, which I think he was a little over two. Um, and at that, again twin sister hitting every every milestone physically developmentally everything just hitting all milestones above her age um Jaden physically you know he could walk I think he was 19 months when he walked so he was a fairly late walker um but in terms of any kind of communication there was just nothing you know he wouldn't copy anything that you did he wouldn't listen to anything he couldn't follow instructions there was no words at all um so yeah at that point they were well they tell you that they're doing a speech and language referral it's more that they're doing a hearing test referral and then once you get your, you pass your hearing test then they did a speech and language referral so that was quite a wait and it wasn't until I got um to my absolute limit and I couldn't cope anymore and I went to a local special needs charity um and he was nearer to three by this point um we were coming up I would say yeah, I would say he was not far off turning three when all of a sudden we actually got a paediatrician appointment and a speech and language appointment purely because the lady from that charity who had been a godsend, <laughs> um, she got on the phone and she was like, look, this child needs to be seen and needs to be seen now. <laughs> um, and yeah, at that point, she was just like, I, I genuinely, my heart breaks for you. I don't know how you've got to this point with no, with no support whatsoever. She said, but as heartbreaking as it is, unless you go in and you're crying and you're saying, 
you know, I cannot physically cope with this child, which nobody wants to say, but unless you're saying that, nobody wants to know at that point. So I think until they turn three anyway, they don't really want to do anything. And it did seem as though he turned three and then we kind of started getting the support a, a little bit. Not massively, but a little bit. Um, so yeah, at just over two as well, he'd started a nursery, but it was a horrendous, horrendous experience. <laughs> And it was partly just down to obviously he didn't settle, but it was also, uh, well, they got shut down by Ofsted. So it, yeah, it generally was not good. He would scream and scream and scream. Obviously you can prepare him for the fact he was going or anything like that because he had no understanding. And it would just be, the car would pull up in the car park. He would realize where he was and just scream and scream and scream. And they had no way, well, I don't think they really tried, but they didn't have any way of settling him. Um, so their answer was that I had to start staying with him, which, yeah, didn't really help, didn't work. Um, and they'd just be like, well, he'll go to special needs school anyway. You know, and I was like, what, what are you doing to help my child? And they'd just be like, oh, well, next year, don't worry, he'll go to, he'll go to special needs preschool next year. And I'm like, but what are you doing to help him now? Um, so thank God they got shut down. He moved to somewhere, which was a hell of a lot better. He settled really quite quickly, but he was still non-verbal, um, coming up towards three. Um, and yeah, he he was coping, but obviously it was difficult because he still didn't have that understanding there. He still didn't talk. Um, and then I had a very strange meeting the one day with the manager and she sat me down and kind of said, I don't see it. And you're like, excuse me, I expect that from members of the family or, you know, people with no understanding of special needs but you're supposed to be not just the manager the senko of this nursery what what are you talking about um she did backtrack quite massively afterwards because his sister was moved up into preschool and he was held down in the toddler room and they went at any point planning on well any point soon planning on moving him up so then i did end up taking him out of that nursery <laughs> um but yeah they they did they did do well for him um, so that was up until he was, uh, well, last September when he went to a proper preschool. Um, so last September he went to a mainstream preschool two days and then he did two days at a language centre, which I don't know whether they have that much across the country, but it was like two, three hour sessions a week of essentially speech therapy, um, which meant he went from barely speaking at all and having very little understanding during that year. They brought him on massively in terms of kind of his speech and language skills. Um, and in terms of like autism diagnosis, um, his paediatrician has always had that kind of we sit back because of the speech and language delays. Um, if he didn't have those, he'd probably have an autism diagnosis now. But because of the speech and language delays, they've had to wait until we're at a point where now we're kind of getting in speech and language reports that he's almost to a level of a child his age. And then they can say, okay, all these other things are still there. That's not speech and language delays. That is autism. And then we go down on that pathway. But it is, I mean, it's been two years since the first time we saw his paediatrician. We saw her today and she's still saying a few more months and then we'll go down that route, which it is frustrating. Um, but he has just started mainstream preschool. So, uh, sorry, mainstream primary school. So we're in reception now at mainstream primary school, which I mean, two years ago, I would never, never imagine that we could have got to this point that he could have settled into a school. And um, from that point of view, it is, it's amazing um, to think that, that we've done that. We've got from thinking that, you know, he might never talk, he might never do this, he might never do that. to here we are at mainstream primary school and he's doing fairly well. So yeah, other things going on though. Disability Living Allowance has been ongoing for coming up for two years. I have a tribunal this week because a year ago my last application was turned down. So I've waited a full year to go to court and fight that. We have got um, school. Um, my understanding was because of preschool forum around here, which is like, um, he doesn't have any HCP, but he has like a, a transitional care plan, which should mean that what they say is what transitions into school. School have decided no, he doesn't need what is in the plan. So yeah, that's quite a major thing. We've got all that going on at the moment, but he is, he's making progress every single day, which is just 
amazing. So yeah, we, as much as it's difficult every single day, we also have to remember that he is doing amazingly. So yeah, that was a very quick 10 minute roundup of my life the last three years. Um, and I hope I've not rambled too much. I hope it's not been talking at 100 miles an hour, but yeah.